Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please click the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sapa, and today we're investigating quite a novel development in behavioral finance and its applications for portfolio management. However, that implements a well-known and quite old concept, which is regret aversion into the process of mean variance Markowitz optimization. Regret aversion is a common behavioral bias in investors that constitutes fear of missing out, basically. If you have got a portfolio that produces a reasonable performance, you still might be not entirely satisfied because some uh, assets or some instruments have massively outperformed your portfolio over a particular time frame. Even if you've got a diversified portfolio, even if you invest in an S&P 500 index fund, which kind of is a go-to academic recommendation, you might still be quite um, sad or disappointed that you haven't invested in Bitcoin or Tesla over the past 10 years. And uh, this constitutes fear of missing out and regret aversion concepts that will seek to integrate into the Markovitz Efficient Portfolio Frontier model today with the help of this particular paper by Bauli, Korn and Kuntz in 2019, it's quite recent, that uh, provides a simple yet very informative modification for the covariance matrix calculation for the Markovitz models that incorporates regret quite naturally. So let's start with our data. We have got five stocks here that constitute our investable universe, our portfolio assets, and uh, those are five uh, well-known US stocks from different sectors, Apple, Caterpillar, Chevron, JP Morgan, and Walmart. And we've got the data on them daily for a 10-year period, uh, and we've got total return indices, so dividend inclusive. We can start by calculating daily returns for each of those stocks, dividing total return index today by the total return index yesterday minus one, dragging it across and enforcing it throughout the sample. And then for the incorporation of regret, we need to think about what regret really means if we think about these five stocks as our investable universe. If you invest in Apple in um, this particular day, your regret is that you haven't invested everything you had into JP Morgan. Because if you invested everything you had into JP Morgan, even though you might not have got a diversified portfolio really, you would have gotten uh, the best return possible at 5.2%. Similarly, in the second day, you might regret not investing everything into Caterpillar, as that's the stock that gave you the best return uh, in this particular day. So this is the uh, mindset behind regret, and this is something that we'll seek to incorporate into our calculations. To do uh, the easiest way, we can simply calculate the best, the maximum return in every single of our trading days, and then quantify the regret of investing into a particular stock in a particular day by simply subtracting from the return of the stock the best return possible. And we see that for JP Morgan in the first day, regret is zero, because if you have um, invested everything into JP Morgan, you suffer no regret, you got the best deal possible. But those numbers vary across days, and the best performing stocks do vary across trading days, which constitutes the risk content of regret. And that's why we'll treat regret as our risk parameter, instead of the usual variance, when we perform our optimization. To uh, further inform uh, our next manipulations, Let's calculate our annual returns as well as annualized risks and regrets of each and every of those stocks. So for Apple, the return is simply the total return index at the very end, divided by the total return index at the very start, to the power of 1 over 10, as we've got 10 years worth of data, minus 1, which gives us an annualized return in Apple of 30%. Again, over a long-term period, you might regret that you haven't invested in Apple, being the best performing stock across all those five to um, again enforce that here we can see that apple indeed has the highest return however to treat uh, regret in a risk sense we need to calculate the sample standard deviation of 
uh, returns and as well as regrets over the course of the whole sample. So for Apple, we input the sample standard deviation of daily uh, total returns first, and uh, then we'll multiply it by the square root of 252 to annualize. Uh, again, very standard procedure. And for the regret, we do the similar manipulation with daily regret of investing into Apple. And we can see that although Apple is a quite risky stock, is not necessarily the most regretful stock to invest in, given again quite high return potential over the past 10 years. Now we can compare it across the stocks and see that although Walmart is the uh, least risky stock, regret-wise it's among the most regretful, with JP Morgan being the least regretful stock to invest in, given its quite substantial uh, return potential. And now we need to know the regret structure, just as we did with risk structure for conventional uh, modern portfolio theory, by calculating the regret matrix. So that is a simple covariance matrix with regrets instead of returns. So you might already know the procedure that we'll uh, implement now. So we'll do sample covariance of the index of the first row of regrets that we'll have to lock. Then we refer to the first index variable here, locking the column. Then we'll implement index of the very last uh, row of returns, locking it, and referring to the same index variable as 7, locking the column. And then we copy it across to specify our second array, and we change the index variable as well as the uh, locking on it. And then we multiply by 252 to annualize our regret covariance. And then we drag it across the matrix, uh, generating a symmetric regret covariance matrix, which would be the risk structure uh, that we'll use for our relevant modeling. And now we can use uh, a very uh, similar uh, approach by optimizing the weights uh, using solver. Again, if you wish to calculate the efficient portfolio frontier for five stocks with regret, you can use the same approach as in the Merton matrix model, simply substituting the covariance matrix for the regret matrix, and I'll provide a link to the video over here. However, to keep it simple, we'll just use solver today. So first, we'll start with an equally weighted portfolio, one over five, into each of the five stocks, we'll sum all the weights to make sure that they do end up uh, at 100% exactly. For our return, we sum product our weights and our annualized returns. And for the regret, we'll need to use uh, the simple matrix multiplication tool by multiplying the weight row onto the covariance matrix, and then matrix multiplying it again on the right by the column of weights which is simply the transposed row of weights. And then to uh, get the regret standard deviation, we can take the square root, just as we do with conventional risk. And we see that we get an annualized return of 15.87% with an annualized regret of 15.63%. To optimize it, let's first go for a minimum regret portfolio, the portfolio that leaves us with the least fear of missing out possible, given the universe of these five stocks. We go to data solver and specify our task. We want our regret to be minimized by changing our weights. And the only constraint we want is that the sum of weights should be equal to one. Here, when we're dealing with regret, uh, non-negative weights uh, are generally even more appropriate than for your uh, minimum uh, variance portfolios or uh, the conventional modern portfolio theory optimizations, simply if you allow a short selling, the best possible return is uh, less obvious. For example, is the best return possible just long in the best performing stock, or is it short in the worst performing stock? Here it's um, less uh, obvious, so I would suggest uh, leaving the stick on and prohibiting short selling just for the sake of the simplicity. And now we can click solve 
and generate our uh, minimum regret portfolio, which would be quite close to an equally weighted portfolio, which with high exposure to Apple, given its high return generating potential, and uh, uh, lower uh, exposures to Caterpillar, Chevron, and to some extent, JP Morgan. Meaning that minimum regret portfolios do produce quite well uh, diversified allocations, which is uh, quite good news to uh, get. Uh, but it's not the only optimization framework that we can use. We can obviously also minimize regret subject to return target. For example, we might want to get the return uh, at least of 20% per year uh, by minimizing regret. So we want the least regretful portfolio that gets us 20% per annum. That would change the weighting substantially with quite high allocations to Apple and JP Morgan. Those will be growing and those are the best returning stocks historically. Again, you can use CAPM returns here and uh, I had a tutorial incorporating those into the conventional Markowitz uh, model. So check this out, please, if uh, you would like to incorporate that into a regret minimization framework and the logic would be exactly the same. Uh, and the final uh, optimization technique that I wanted to show is the reverse. Imagine that you want to maximize your return subject to a regret constraint. So imagine that you want your regret to be at most, so less than or equal to 17%. And if that's the case, your portfolio would be even uh, more concentrated in uh, Apple and JP Morgan with the exposure to Chevron dropping to 0% given it's pretty low return, quite understandable. And that's the easy way of incorporating regret quantitatively, measuring it and relying on it for portfolio optimization using the logic of the Bowler Corden Kunz paper of 2018. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make it to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.